Hello my dear students, welcome to this new episode of the video. Now in this video, we'll talk about installing Laravel, okay? And quickly, I'm just going to go to the documentation and to assess that laravel.com slash docs slash docs and this will redirect you to the latest version being 6. I think uh, 4 as at the time of recording this video. So I'm going to just copy this composer right here command okay then I'm just going to go to I'm gonna hit on the shift key okay and then I'm gonna hit on the open partial window paste that command and replace blog with fellowship great so this will take a couple of seconds to what's it called to load and I'm just gonna pause the video till this goes up now one other thing is if you have any issues okay with this load and you want to increase the load time you could install a Laravel package called the oh, sorry a composer package called the composer prestissimo okay so you just find it on github or google it composer prestissimo and then you install it okay it's going to make the what's it called the download process or creating of your level scaffolding application quite more faster than usual so guys I'm gonna pause this till it goes up completely and I'll see you okay welcome back guys uh, we've got level installed completely and right about now I'm just gonna go to the folder where we install Laravel okay and then I'm just gonna open partial window here and I'm gonna say php artisan serve okay just to test run this and see how it turns up so I'm going to go to our local ports okay and bam we've got Laravel installed okay so I'm gonna open this real quick in PHP Storm. Okay. Okay, so I think this is already opened up for us correctly and under the hood I'm just gonna check something real quick guys now in the controls folder you see we already have some authentication scaffolding created for us that comes directly with Laravel okay so this is good because in the previous session of Laravel you have to do the Laravel make alt command to create all of this for us okay this is nice now in version 6.0 when you come to the public folder you don't see any assets or CSS or JS file which in previous version you will you would see an app.js and an app.css file and folder right here okay now this is so because Laravel is now um, segregating its code from its design okay so that you can customize your design whichever way you want okay and now you would need to run some commands okay this composer require Laravel UI dev which is in the authentication channel uh, authentication or the security section and the authentication tab to bring those um, assets and CSS folder back in place but right about now we're not going to bother about that because we are not going to be using that we are going to be creating a simple authentication mechanism okay in this course so quickly I'll just introduce us to our design right here okay on HTML CSS design which I already had set up before this course and I'm gonna share this folder in the resource section of this video so if you go to the index right here you see we have the simple user interface okay we have the profile we have the followers and this lovely scroll bar right here and we have a load more button we have the following and we have people okay and this time around we have a search option okay so 
For this to actually work, we need a kind of authentication mechanism whereby a user will be authenticated. Okay, user needs to be logged in. And so for that, I created a login, a simple login interface and a register interface. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video where we be plugging in these interfaces, okay, to our uh, blank Laravel application. Bye-bye. Welcome back my lovely students, happy to see you, happy to hear that you hear me from the other side, okay, so right about now, I'm just going to go to the HTML folder, okay, believing you have found and downloaded this resource, if you don't, if you can't find that, just contact me, I'm always available in the comment section 247, okay, so I'm going to copy this assets folder, it's really what I like doing, copy the assets folder and I'm going to go to PHP Storm, okay, and I'll paste this in public, okay, and I'll take a couple of seconds to synchronize, great, and then, okay, I think this is still loading, let's see, Okay, so this is loaded completely. And then I would go to the, what's it called, the routes and go to web. And right here you'd see we have just the get route, which is the, um, the welcome route. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is to leave it that way. Okay, go to the resource folder and go to views okay so I'm gonna make a folder real quick and a file in it so I'm gonna make the first folder called logged in okay logged in okay just sorry that's supposed to be a folder not a file let's call this logged in okay and then I am going to create another folder called maybe home, okay? And then I'm gonna create a folder called a layout. Great. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is to rename this welcome to index. I just like doing that, okay? It changes nothing in particular but i love doing that okay just so changes to index as well great and now what i'm going to do right now is to just make sure everything is in place so i'll go back to reload my application and we can see clearly that everything is still in place now the next thing I want to do is to go to the HTML, okay, and in this index right here, we have, I'm just going to open with a lightweight code editor, and I think um, brackets would do the job for us. Okay, so index right here, I'm just going to copy this real quick. Now, in the layout right here, I'm going to call this create a new file in the layout called main blade.php okay so we have this okay main blade.php I'm gonna paste that in the layout okay so that's good now apart from that I am going to take off this container right here okay and I'm gonna say add yield okay and say content okay so we have that and for scripts right here add yield script okay and right here add yield i'm gonna say styles just style right great 
and in the index right here i'm going to take all of these guys out and i'm going to say add extends okay and it's going to extend the layout dot the main okay and then i'm going to start a new section and i'm going to say the section is the content and then i'm going to stop this section okay great and paste that right there so now if i view this in the browser you see we have this amazing layout up and running great but for some reason i just like to wrap all of this in the assets function okay the assets laravel built-in function now there's some the it's a reason i'm doing this okay because with time when you start deploying your application live okay it starts um loading its resource that's this asset folders and files as a relative path and what that means is that when you try to access maybe a link other than this um, um, home right here or root directory index right here, the access file might not load up correctly. Okay, you might not understand this right now. I don't know how easy enough to put this, but this is just good practice. Okay, just do it. So, I'm gonna wrap all of this just like so. Great. So now for the index, we would want to have the logging. Okay. We don't want to have the what's the call. So I'm just going to collapse this gutter right here. Copy every item in it. And for the index, I'm going to replace all those guys with this. Great. So let's just see this in a browser real quick. And bam guys we have this up and running now uh, what this literally means is that the home page is going to be our index page the, sorry the login page is going to be our index page okay and that's good that's good so we need to create another route for our registration page okay so let's just do that real quick we go to app and HTTP controllers. We already have a folder called alt, okay? But I just like to create mine, okay? So I'm just gonna click the control, okay? I think I can actually get the terminal from here. So in the terminal right here, I'm gonna say PHP artisan make controller And I'm gonna create alt controller, okay? Great. And then I think it will be nice for us to just create our routes immediately. So go to web and we're gonna say route. get okay and we're going to say slash register okay and it's going to go to the odd controller at register okay great and we're going to give this a name of register great so hopefully we get this correctly i'm just going to Copy this, go to our auth controller, create a public function, public function, register, and return. I'm just gonna return this. Okay, so let's just have that. So I'm gonna go to this site slash register. And if we don't have an error, we are golden, guys. We don't have an error. Now, for 
this I'm going to call this the home layout, okay? Because when he's just trying to register, the user is not logged in. So I'm going to put this in the folder home. And then we're going to call this register.blade, okay, dot PHP. Great. So we've got that up and running. And I'm going to go back to my HTML and I'm going to copy this right here. Okay. Great. Copy that to that particular folder and we reload so we just have to in the auth controller we have to return view okay and this time around we say home dot register okay so if you're a newbie this is blade templating engine this is going to home and it's going to register okay in the views folder when you return the view folder it's going to home and register great so let's just reload this real quick and bam we've got this up and running but just one thing guys we still need to extend this layout just like we did for the login so we extend and right here you could say stop or end section whichever one you find convenient but I like stop so reload this and we are up and running so real quick guys I am just going to do something real quick okay for the for the log for the um, the logged in which is the index right here okay this part where it says don't have an account I'm just going to say route okay And I'm going to say register great so that means when we go to the home right here we click and you see we can go to the register so for the login I believe we should just set that to okay let's just say that to route home okay and let's see how that turns out oops we don't have a route name home it's supposed to be okay but we can actually name it home right here okay so let's just see that great so when I click on the login right here we'll go back home so guys that's pretty much it we have a UI set up completely for us and on the next video we are going to do some amazing stuff see you in the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome back to this video this episode of the video okay so on the last video we talked about the registration and the login now on this video I would like to do something real quick okay I would like to include what is called Axios okay and we have Ajax and we also have Axios okay so Axios is a promise based HTTP client for browser and for Node.js. So if you don't know about Axios, I would urge you to just Google Axios to JS. Okay. And you're gonna see that right away. And if you cool using jQuery and Ajax, you can actually do that. Well I just kind of like the way Axios works, okay. And it it lets you write async await code to perform uh, XH our request very easily okay you can see that right here and it supports all modern browsers including support for internet explorer 8 and higher so i think that's one reason for us to use axios i actually like the async await functionality okay and it has this cool effect to our uh, what's called page more like you see in the youtube effect whereby the speed loading pace okay the page loading pace you actually see the page loading pace in the top section of your browser so right about now you just have to go to the documentation and read that it's really a lengthy one okay so to make things a little bit much easy my dear students I decided to create an Axios setup folder okay and here there's a readme file that comes with a kind of guide on how to um, load this up okay if you go to the documentation it's really long to set up but I just want to save us the headache okay so we have the access loader CSS access loader mean the JS and access loader the JS 
and after loading up this resource you just have to include this script afterwards so first of all we just have to copy the two javascript file and go back to our what's it called project in our public with the assets and in JS we're just gonna paste that right there okay so we have that and close these guys up okay close these guys up and this guy okay and this guy this guy okay so let's just close this guy right now later we just have to copy this we are doing that right now in the CSS control V great and then we have to include this somewhere okay so well first we just have to go to index okay right here in index or in the main layout sorry I think that would be nice and in the main layout the way we include this other JavaScript resource right here we're just gonna do it right now so like this we're gonna have um, in JS Axios right here Axios don't mean the JS Axios don't mean the JS and then we are going to have um, Axios loaded the JS okay and in the star section okay we are going to include axios loader dot css and afterwards we just have to copy this script tag and place it right here okay i think we can just do it right here okay my dear students i hope that was actually simple enough okay so what i'm gonna do right now is to go to the browser and go back to this page that's a uh, login page and click on create one yeah that's create a new account I'm gonna view page source right now and make sure that the access loader CSS is loading correctly so since I'm seeing this um, CSS right resource right here it means that's loaded up and for the access loader JS and for the mean so it's loading up correctly so I'm gonna test run access to make sure that it's set up properly okay and how I'll do that is to go to register okay so quickly I'm just gonna give this an ID say register or I'm gonna say I'm gonna use a DOM event say on submit okay return a function called register user register user so we're gonna create the function right away okay and I'm gonna pass in an event right there okay and right here I'm gonna say section we're gonna start a new section and this time around it's going to be the script section okay so I'm gonna start the script tag right there and I'm going to say function okay pass in the function name set the event parameter event the prevent default okay and then i'm going to say axios dot get i'm not going to pass anything i'm just going to say dot then dot then and i'm going to use the fat arrow function okay and say maybe data and i'm going to say console dot log data right there okay so what we have right here is for this section okay if you go to the main we have script yield script right here okay so just like we did for the yield content we are going to start a new section called script great so we have a function register user and on submit of this form do that so I'm just gonna have a type submit to this button okay and then go back to the page hopefully if we don't have an error this works just fine now if you notice just because of the background color just 
all this on this top section right here you see there's a movement and there's something rolling right there okay so that's because of the color i have in the axios um loader right here okay so if you feel like you can change it okay to something darker okay choose and we're just gonna use that let's just play around with this you can leave like that if you want to i just feel like messing around with it okay so let's just see how this goes okay so that's bad i'm just gonna leave it back the way it is great guys so this video was just to include axios okay into our project and we see that it's actually working but if i check the console right here it's actually not doing anything important okay so next session of the video we are going to start creating users and validating users input using axios and laravel okay so see you on the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome back to this video now in this video we would um, work more on this registration section okay and we're going to add some little validation to it so right about now I am going to go to register and I'm going to add the name attribute to this input field so I would say name full name or oh, I'm just gonna leave that as name and then this the name would be username and this the name would be password great now if you like you can add an id for the label okay but i'm just gonna leave it that way and i wouldn't want to use this way the on submit um, document event i'm just gonna use an id i'm gonna call this form or red form okay great now for this instead of this function i'm going to say document dot on okay submit watch for any submit event tied to this id then run this function make sure you pass in the event okay and then prevent the default behavior of the submit form then run axios as opposed to request this time around with a route we haven't created but would soon create so we call this register post okay and then we should pass a data okay so we should create a let variable and then we'll call this data okay and this should be this event or this selector which we are working with serialize its input okay and this is the data we're passing from me right here now when this is sending it does two things it then returns success which we are going to accept with the fat arrow function or it returns an error which we are going to catch with the fat arrow function too with the error variable or error parameter okay so let's console log this to see that we have in it all nice and good console the log error also now what i like to do this bit by bit is that we are humans and we're prone to mistake okay so it's good for us to make this mistake beforehand and debug them than making them in the future where we get get confused about what might actually be causing the problem now we also need to create a post route real quick okay we didn't create one but we used one so we are going to have an error if we reload that page because we don't have this created so back to the odd controller i'm going to say public function we have this right here i'm just going to return um 
hello great so go back reload all nice so go to the console try to send this we are having a problem right there guys because our home is reloading okay so let's try to see if we can fix this this is form id reg form reg form event prevent document dot on select hmm everything seems to be fine i wonder why we are having this let's see as you say the moment we get here just up it something up it something and reload so let's see okay mm, i think this should be type of submit let's just see this in action mm. so bottom line is that we are not getting this okay so because for the section guys i think i miss write that or spell that we don't have the script okay so i'm gonna put that script right away and we're having that okay so that's good and you see right here we have data hello good okay so what i'm gonna do right now is to take this a lot off okay and then i would want to show us about this in the network provider bar okay then when we say add the post request look at the parameters are sending in okay the payload right here which is the data is sending in is actually serializing this okay and the response is receiving that serialization we see is because of this serialization we see right here okay passing it to the axios post which has set two parameters the route and the inputs we are sending to search parameters so right about now i'm quickly going to do create more like a validation for this okay so if you know about laravel validation before fine if you don't please just pay attention okay and you're going to learn it so i'm going to create two associative array kind of thing and we're going to have rules for the first we're going to say name and we're going to say required okay and should be a string and should have a maximum input capacity of 120 words and then we should have we should have username pretty much the same we should have password okay but this time around i would want the password to have a minimum of six okay and then we should have email okay and this time around we don't need minimum for this and instead of string we should pass email great now for messages okay we are going to create a custom message for this now if you know how to do this with laravel fine if you don't please still pay attention we are going to say name dot required okay we're going to say this field is required okay and for the name dot string okay if it's not a string we'll say this field is invalid okay and if it's too long name dot max we are going to say this field is too long okay great now we're just going to duplicate this for the username okay and i'm quickly going to change this to username okay and we're going to duplicate this also for the password okay password and we're going to add a validation for the minimum and i'll say this please enter a more secured password 
okay and lastly we're just going to duplicate this for email we have required we have string we have maximum okay for email and lastly we have email for email okay then i would say please please enter a valid email address great um next thing we want to do is to create a validation variable validation variable okay or validator variable whichever one you would like to call it so i'm going to call it validator and i'm going to say validator okay validator but this time around we want to use it okay this would be a capital v we want to use the facade okay and then we're going to say make a validation okay passing all the requests okay then also passing the rules and the messages great so right about here we should also pass in the request okay and then we want to say an if condition or if statement if validator okay fails it's a boolean it's called it also re always return true or false if you don't just return all good okay and if the validation fails we would want to return a response okay precisely a JSON response okay and we want to pass that as an associative array having the validator variable we created and this time it's going to have errors i always like to send a status code to the browser okay so we have 422 which is a kind of like on an authentication fails error so required 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 we have all of this in place let's go test this and see so right about now you see we have 422 and we have this group of errors errors name username password email is all required name username password i think we didn't add an email field to this registration form okay so i'm just gonna do that real quick name username should have email right here okay and just to test that this form is working we should just enter something okay real quick and send and then we see that username field is required okay password please enter a more secure password and email this field is required i think we have issues with the name username email password name let's see this name okay this wasn't spelled correctly username email password okay now let's go try this again send okay now we have password please enter a more secure password and let's just try this I think we should have only email validation error please enter a valid email and when we try to enter something that looks valid you see we have all good great now on the next video we'll stop looking at these errors in the network bar and start appealing them right in our html document okay or in our view so see you in the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome back to this new episode of the video now in the vi this video, we are going to start appealing those validation errors, okay, just in our view, okay. I think before now, we are checking that in the network manager, which is not fair enough. So, what I'll do is, I'll go right here, and I'll create a div class, okay, and... I'm going to have the class called, let's say, um, or oh, I prefer div ID. 
and the ID is going to be name error name field okay let's just call it name field and I'm gonna copy this real quick right here and I'm gonna call this username field okay same goes for the email email field and for the password we have password field great now apart from that I'm just going to add a class called has error okay as error to mm, I think this would be nice if we added right in the input so I'm going to say has error okay just that one and I'm going to style that up a bit I'm going to say if we have such class we should have a border of two pixels solid red okay or I think one pixel would be better one pixel solid red okay and that's nice that's fair enough great so we're gonna put that in custom.css great okay so now let's just take that out because this is gonna be dynamic for now now in this cache section this is where we're catching the errors okay so there's something we need to know if I'm to refresh this page okay clear this guys out and try to submit it is actually returning the response as an object of arrays okay this is an object you see the curly braces and you see the square bracket so for JavaScript to actually process this since this is in JSON JavaScript can actually process this okay right we need to do something real quick now what I like to do is I like to create a function to process this separately so that my code doesn't get messy so I'll create a function called print error message okay where I'm gonna pass in error okay I'm gonna pass in the response or the error response we are getting from the controller so it's gonna be error the response okay dot data dot error okay now this error right here is this error right here okay so it came from the response remember the response right um right here response okay the json is been represented as the data because if you try to pass in a kind of a parameter the first parameter you have here right you see is data and it has this error so just to explain that so next i'd like to create a function and this function will be outside this whole code so it's be function we have that okay so the next is I would like to accept this function okay as a message okay so now let's just console that log this to make sure we are on track okay so hopefully if we don't have any error let's reload we should see okay now we have objects of the array right there great we're amazing guys now one thing we need to do is to start picking this um, object of the array one after the other so I'm gonna say if making sure that we don't have an undefined so if message is not equal to undefined we want to do this okay then I'm gonna define a variable called object which is going to all object keys objects that keys okay of the message okay great and then I'm going to say if I'm going to use this jQuery um, way of doing this so 
I'm gonna say in array this is more like a jQuery prototype okay so if you don't understand what that is the problem just pay attention you are going to understand so jQuery in array we're going to say name if name is in array okay then we want to pass in the array which is the object okay and say equals to now minus one if it's not in the array okay and I think it will turn zero if it's in the array so I'm going to open a color braces instead of closing that I'm going to have an else statement too so jQuery in array name okay now this name is supposed to be a string okay so if you know really jQuery blah and we have that there's this console.log right here yes it is um sorry nope it isn't okay and console.log yes it is great so let's just view this hopefully if we don't have any error okay yes it is that means we have this name validation in it send again yes it is what happened if I fill in the name field submit nope it isn't so we see the validation is making sense guys yes it is making sense so if yes it is okay we have such error we would want to say select okay the name field and add a class as error which we styled initially so right about now I'm just going to say ID name impute okay so for this we're going to say ID username impute and for this ID email impute and I think lastly ID password impute okay so we are going to say select this ID and add class add class to it add class as error to it okay now if it doesn't we need to remove the class from it great so let's see this in action real quick guys I'm just gonna go right here reload this page and right there continue see we have this and the moment we enter and send you see we don't have that so apart from that we still need to send or put in the message right there okay so we're gonna place this message in this name field div class enter div class we created okay so that was why we created it and if it has the error okay we are going to select this name field and in the HTML okay we are going to pass in the message so we have the message and in it as an array we are going to pass a name and we just want to pass in the first error okay so the error has been saved one at a time and if it doesn't we are just going to leave this blank okay remove that so we could actually append a kind of div class to this to style this up a bit if we want to okay but I also think we could actually still do it this way as arrow okay let's just leave it that way okay I think we can actually have something like that as arrow to target this but I think this would be the best and most easiest way to achieve this so we're gonna concatenate this with a div okay and we're gonna have a class arrow 
input let's just have that concatenate another and we should close the div great so let's see this in action real quick guys i'm just going to clear this up clear this up submit and you see this field is acquired okay now we have and it's gone great so i still need to start this up a bit because okay now i'm going to start this error impute div we just had it i'm going to say you should have a pack margin top of 10 pixel a color of red okay font size decreased a bit okay and that's it guys so put this in the custom.css and right about now i'm just going to duplicate this for the rest of of it okay so if you like you could duplicate this or if you like you could make this reusable okay so whichever one would work i think i could actually make this reusable okay by saying right here i'm going to say um another function called another function called process process error okay and i'm going to define the function here yeah, function process error and i'm going to paste that okay now we're going to replace this first one with the name okay so it's going to be a variable right now name okay then we're going to have a second one which is the so let's just pass that name right here now we're going to have a second one which is the name input okay we're going to have that as the input okay so this is going to be input and then we are going to have the third one as validation field okay so right here validation field great so same thing goes to this validation field and same thing goes to this input great and for this this guy right here it's going to be the name great so for the validation field we were supposed to have this guy right here name field okay so I'm gonna pass this and all things being equal this is supposed to still work so let's just go see this in action continue we have a problem obj is not defined okay i think we should pass the obj first okay and accept it right here okay let's try this one more time message is not defined mm. message is not defined let's still pass the message right here and accept it right here okay and reload okay so we have this now one good thing about what i do right did right here is that it's going to limit the number of lines of code we write but i think that's good enough so process message is going to the next one we want to do is to pass in the username okay and the field is username field in fact it's pretty much going to be the same this is going to be username okay and this is going to be username and this is username and for the email we have email we have email right here 
and I think we have email too and for the password we have password and we have password one thing is that if we were to repeat this um, line of code it's going to be quite lengthy so this makes it much more easier so let's load this and we have this amazing validation system working okay so you see how amazing this is guys please enter now this is telling us please enter by the email we didn't do this right this is supposed to be a password okay so reload try please do feel this required please enter a more secure password now the password is secure and now this is also secured okay great now one more thing i want to say is that you see that the arrows are handled one at a time this field is required please enter a valid now this is so because we actually entered this zero right here okay as the index of the error message we are receiving if not we are going to have um list of errors okay which I don't just like I just like having the errors one at a time. So that's it, guys, for the session of the video. Now, on the next session of the video, we are going to complete the registration process, okay? And I'll see you in the next session of the video. Bye bye. Welcome back, my dear students. Now, on this session of the video, that's something I would just like to add, okay? I'm just going to Google Spinal CSS, okay? Oh. Let's just see our loader. CSS loading spinner or loading spinner CSS or something. Something nice. Oh great, we have this guys right here. So I can click on this one. And we have the HTML right here. Okay. So you just put that somewhere but before I do that I would like to copy the CSS okay and this would be in custom.css well placed and then we should have this back so what I want to do is the soon as the user click on the button I want to create a function say load spinner okay and I'm just going to say yeah load spinner now what I want to do is that I'm going to say true or oh, I shouldn't do it that way what I want to do is that as soon as this happens we need to select the button okay the button attributes which we're going to do okay no time and the HTML, the inner HTML should be this spinner HTML we copied. Okay. Now, for this button, we have this to be the class right here. Continue. Um, what's it called? Form login action. Sorry. And it's a class or the div. So we want that to happen and we're gonna make this reusable okay by saying load spinner is going to have this so what we're going to do right now is just passing this as a parameter okay right here so i'm going to be select just let's just call this um item okay and right here it's going to be item good and for this guy, what we'll call the load spinner, okay, we're gonna have it just like so. Item. So this should be a function. Great. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this down. So it's well organized. Now for the non-load spinner, okay, which is remove spinner we are just going to leave this blank great so 
Where are you? Remove Spina. Now, we are not going to leave this blank. I'm sorry. We are going to pass in a message. Okay. The initial status of the button. And this is going to be the message right there. So, when we click the button to submit the form, load Spina. Okay. Now, when we receive a response, be it good, be it error that's beat positive message or error message we still want to remove the spina okay so in the remove spina the first thing we want to send is the selector so right about now i am going to send in the selector that way and the message and the message we have right here which is the initial one is continue so message should be continue okay and also for this now one of that good practice you might want to have is when the spinner is loading which is load spinner you might also want to want to disable the input field okay that's a good practice so the user doesn't send any other request until the one previously sent has been um validated so just gonna say disabled and gonna say true okay and for the remove spinner it's going to say false okay make sure you use true and false great now let's just see this in action hopefully there's no error you see we have we have that now one thing if you notice is that as soon as you click on the button it becomes inactive but one thing is that the the spinner kind of is not well placed so I'm just gonna remove this guy right here okay so that I could set up the spinner correctly so the height I'm just gonna really use this to 22 pixel and the weight 22 pixel okay well we still have some problems mm, for the top as you see it is up yes that's it okay and we have anything for the left no we don't we can actually put one say left 10 pixel mm, some reason won't work because I noticed it's actually not in the right position let's say margin zero or two or text align center to see I'm just gonna leave it that way okay so for this we are going to place that right here to what we have 2020 okay And for this div, hmm, for left, I think that's nice. But for this, it's going to have a top like so. So let's just see this in action. And that should be again for the div absolute. Okay, just replace this. Okay, yep. And so when I click on this, we have that nice. I can still reduce this if we want. Let's take it to 15. Okay. Great. So after this, I want to put back this guy right back the way it was and reload. So when we click on continue, you see we have this amazing effect loading and the rest okay my dear students i think this video is long enough okay on the next video we're going to complete the registration process okay so see you on the next video bye bye welcome back my dear students now in this session of the video i'm going to continue with creating a user now usually i like doing it this way to create a new instance of the user okay you can actually do it this way or any way you like 
So I'm just going to go ahead using this way and I'm going to say name is equals to the request name which we are passing and then I'm going to say um, username is equals to the request of the username we are passing and then I'm going to say password is going to be hash make request of the password we're passing and then I'm going to say email is equal to the request of the email we're passing and then we need to save the data great and when we save this data we want to return a response response of JSON which is a data okay so we're going to say success okay and account created successfully great so this is give this the right spelling good and apart from that we would need to set another one called redirect link okay and for the redirect link we would have perhaps this is say we would have route okay and we'll call this index so this will take us to the home the moment we create our account so let me import this hash leak okay right here we need to import this right here the hash for sad okay so this should create real good for us but i just need to make sure that we have on the same page with our database and migration so what about now i'm just going to go to the user migration and in the username and the what's it called the table i'm going to have the username which i just did right here okay then apart from that in my dot env variables i need to create a what's it called a database so i'm going to call this database fellowship we haven't created that so we are going to create that in localhost php my admin and i'll say new into the database name create and nice so let's go back and try to say php artisan migrate great and this is migrated successfully for us so i can try to load this again and let's try to create an account this time around we should open the network toolbar okay and should enter a password that's quite long just a random account okay try to create we have a 500 error route index not defined mm, home it's supposed to be home sorry not index so we should call this home great so I try to create again. We have a duplicate entry, which means that we didn't set a unique field for the username. Okay, so let's just say unique users. Okay, and then for the password, also we need to have unique, and for the email, sorry, users table. So this is going to be unique to the users table, both of them. So continue now we have this email has already been taken and that let's try to create another one and now we have 200 so we have first a success message i can't create it successfully and we have a redirect link which would take us back to um the other place which that, where we want the user to go so next thing i want to do is to use a kind of notification called uh notiflix okay I kind of like the notification system 
So we'll not see flicks. It's a JavaScript library. So you can download Notaflix from here. It's pretty much simple to use. Just download. Okay, and then we open the zip file. We should say better to use the minified. Okay. So we'll copy this out. I think we have. And then we we'll go to JS and paste this in. Okay. And then we take the CSS to the CSS portion. Great. And just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to copy this name so I would link them properly. So back to the main layout. Okay. Just perhaps after the axios. I'm going to say script okay src let's link up the script first and i'm going to say assets going to the assets folder slash js then slash notaflix that means the js okay and then we should do that for styles as well so i should paste this in great now let's go back and make sure that this resource is loaded correctly. Okay, so click on this. We're saying this code means it's loading. And click on this. We're saying this code means it's loading. Great. So I'm going to reload that. And we're going to check on how to use maybe a report or a confirm. Let's just see any of them. Okay, so this is how we use a confirm. Confirm is yes or no. A report, this is like a success. So we say this. Well, we're going to test run this real quick and see that it works just the way we want. And one of the best way I like to test run is just to add it maybe somewhere here. Well, I think we didn't click, we didn't copy that, right? Let's just copy this, copy code and paste. Okay, so let's just quickly test run that it works just fine. So we should see a kind of notification. Okay, so you see we have this right here. Okay, great. So what we need to do is to have this as the notification system. Okay, but not right there. Before we use that, so to push this then, which is the success we are having data, we need to make sure that we are getting the right what's the call from it. So when we try to register, okay, we should store the kind of response we have from it. Okay, so we're not doing any magic or oh, username. So data, you see we have data right again, and we have this redirect and success meaning that I am going to go into data okay and for the success we are going to use the text in the success as our notification message okay so right about now I'm going to do that okay so the test in the success would be our notification message then I think we should have OK right here. Great. Now, apart from that, we need to redirect the user. But we want this notification to show for some time before we redirect the user. So literally, we're just going to set say a set time, set timeout. OK. And it's going to be a function. Yes, with a callback of how long. Let's just say 400 four seconds, or this is three seconds, it's okay. And say it's gonna delay, and as soon as the delay take us to window.location, take us to the location of the redirect which we should go. So, redirect 
I think we can find that here. Redirect link. Okay, so redirect link. Great. Now we should jazz up this success message a little bit. I can create it successfully. Please do not leave the page. Page would automatically refresh. Okay, so we should have some like whoa, account created successfully. Great, so let's go back to this real quick reload and enter something nice. Create a random some just for test papers. Continue. We have a success. Whoa, account created successfully. And bam, you see it takes us to the login page automatically by itself. Now, when it takes us to the login page automatically by itself, we also want to set a session, kind of like a flash session that says red success, okay? And say, please login to continue. Okay, great. So now for this very success, we're going to go to our login page. Now, all this is what well, all of these things we're doing is to give the site a kind of nice user experience. Okay, and I hope we're learning a tool in from it. And if session has red success, okay, we also need to end our if. We delete templating engine so we say session get reg success we should have a div class say success notes okay and then we should have that so let's go back and try to register okay again random read okay count created successfully and bam we have this so we have please login to continue now we should make this a little bit more fancy by starting this up so so we're gonna have margin button 20 pixel background red give it some little padding okay i think that's too much and this is nice decrease the size a bit Give it a little bit border radius of three pixel okay i think two pixel will be okay and then we should have this background color change to something friendly okay i think i would prefer this blue okay and there seem to be a pattern from somewhere pushing this no problem we'll get that fixed the custom just gonna put this down okay now for this guy we can actually drag this to maybe the row but that's not nice we we'll put it right here still not nice and what happened if we put a form row okay now this is nice okay so we could do something say for this page we are going to put this in div class in a row okay so it just stay with the others so let's reload this go back we have the success yes we do try to submit and let's submit no matter what you do just leave it and okay please log in to continue now this is great guys and that's it for the create account okay we can now successfully create account okay and one other thing is that when you always come to this page you see your full name and everything there if you don't want that to always prefill just come here and say what to complete off okay so whenever you reload the page it's all gone so guys, I'll see you in the next session of the video. 
where we're going to be repeating the same tax or process for our login. Okay, so now we've created our account successfully. We need to log in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this new session of the video. Now, in this episode or this session, we are going to talk about the login. Okay, so on the last video, we talked about the the registration and we finished the registration purpose the function now for the um, login it's pretty much going to be easy because we already have a lot of function written down already from the registration so i'm going to have a post route for login okay because the login is the home route and for some reason we shouldn't post to the home route I just don't like posting to the home route okay so we're just gonna have a post and say post route and say login post okay and same for this one login post so we create this in the public okay public function and we have that okay so we're gonna pass in request and then we are going to copy from here to here we don't have to rewrite okay guys we don't have to rewrite this but I think we are actually placing that in the wrong position so right now it's placed properly, it's the place as well. Great. Okay. So we have this all set. Now for login, we use the username and the password. So same validation goes required. And just that for the password. Okay. If the password is we're just gonna leave it this way, okay? Just just leave it that way. And we're not having unique because now it's to login. Okay, even the maximum is not required, but let's just leave it that way. So, name is all gone. And so is email. And so is minimum. Okay, so we're golden. Now, e validation fails that if it doesn't fail, just return all good. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is to go to the registration page and we're just going to copy all of these guys and then we'll remove the ones we don't need. So back to the index, paste that right in there and for the login, we're going to change this to login post. Okay and the soonest i need to confirm this is continue okay so we're going to leave that and for this one we just need to validate the username and password alone so we're going to take these two off okay so now for this one we don't need this okay and I think we could still find a good notification to use kind of it is not a flix this is quick to try okay I think I like this copy that's nice. Even processing is also nice. I think processing is better. Okay, so when this comes up successfully, we don't want to give a uh, what's it called a box confirmation box kind of thing. And neither do we want those stuff. So this is great and nice. Okay, so. We just have to 
set up our input field right now guys so go to register and we'll have this for username field and password field so the index right here we have this and for password we have this okay so we also have um, the ID and the name okay right here ID and the name and for password we also have the ID and the name as well okay great and for this one we should make sure that it's password field also great so now let's go try this out and see well okay so we have one more thing to correct right here we should have an ID okay remember we have this one reg form we're gonna call that ID login form okay so copy that and paste it right here and also remember to auto com off autocomplete mm -hmm. yes of autocomplete and all this reload and continue so this is great guys see exactly the same you should name this field as required this field as required and then so let's just go create an account real quick i'm gonna go call it call the name your instructor name oziri emeka emmanuel and for the username i would say oziri the password is oziri emeka the, sorry the email address is oziri emeka at gmail.com my official email address and for the password is one two three four five six so remember username Siri and the rest so let's save that and so we have please log in to continue so I'm gonna say this is Osiri and this is one two three four five six so let's open the network notification bar to see this in action continue okay so you see we have this awesome processing right there and we should see all good great now to continue the what's it called the validation for the login we're going to put that in the next video this video is long enough so see you in the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to this new session of the video now in this episode or the session we are going to talk about the login we are going to talk about the login out okay from our application and also setting up some authentication middleware now in the last video we talked we segregated the login interface okay from the authenticated interface so right now for username I'm going to say Osiri okay and login so as soon as this is done we need to have a login a logout button somewhere okay so quickly we will just create one okay so I think this is not bad I can see RF okay and I'll call this logout and I'm gonna have a class say logout action okay and reload great so for this look at action, I'm going to say display inline block, okay, and I'm going to say the width should be more like title pixel, height title pixel, then we should have a background of red, okay, and a border radius of 3 pixel great so definitely the width should be more than that and it should be text align center okay then color should be 
white okay and I think that's good enough for the height we can go even less oh that's okay and most especially we should be position absolute and right to zero okay right should be zero definitely or 20 recency 10 pixel and top 10 pixel okay so just before that we have that we still just want to have uh five icon that's font awesome icon sorry and back to our code i just pasted in the font awesome icon okay so i just don't want to go take a lot of time through the design process okay and for this itemize here we should have position relative okay so let's try that again position relative and then let's reload this great okay so we have this beautiful very beautiful <laughs> look at button right there still trying to customize this too bad I'm a perfectionist in styling and I tend to think take a lot of time trying to start things to look good okay but I actually think this is nice okay so font size I'm gonna share perhaps this okay um, this style to just in case you need you need it okay so we have where was the logout we were designing We're just gonna replace the whole of those code with this okay so now let's reload this and we have this beautiful logout button right there okay so we need to create another middleware okay so instead of writing just save time and duplicate now this time for the middleware it's gonna be odd okay you can check kernel this kind of right here odd middleware to get to know more about that or you could just google it and then I'm going to create a get route so I'm just gonna duplicate this and for the logout there's a way I actually do that now you can actually log out create your own logout functionality the way you want okay but I just like to rely on Laravel's way of logging out okay so what I do is I would use the default logout so it's gonna be alt slash forward slash logging controller now there is a default controller generated for us by Laravel login controller okay and in this login controller it uses an abstract class called authenticates user now when you go to this authenticate user or it uses a trait let me just call it a trait authenticate user you see that there is login validate login and if you go down we should have logout so this is how it logs out request to the user session it invalidates it and a whole lot of things so we've got this in place uh, for the logout I'm using this as a get request okay you could change that to a post request if you want to but for now I'm just gonna leave that definitely it would be good practice for logout to be a post request instead of a get request so we have route logout and nice so when I click on logout we are logged out okay and now let's try to log in again we would be logging now we are logged in so finally for my name I am just going to say odd okay user then 
I'm just going to say name. Okay, so we have the real name there. So let's try to log out and log in. So I believe this is my real name there. Great. So guys, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Now the next video, we are going to start implementing our main functionalities, which is the follow for follow functionality. But so guys, I'll see you in the next video, guys. If you're new to this, just stay put. You're doing awesome. Okay, you're building a really professional um, application. I'm taking to you through industry standard, and if you can see. The process so far is quite simple though quite a long one okay but it's quite simple if you pay right attention and it's very professional okay this is what you see for big sites and the rest okay we they're not doing anything marvelous or superb than whatever thing we're doing right now okay but if you're already a professional hey buddy i hope you learned the two or thing from my video okay and let's continue see you on the next video bye bye hello welcome back my dear students to this episode of the video now in this episode of the video I want to do something real quick okay I want to create some database seeds okay so we don't go through the process of creating okay because things are really getting serious in our application so right about here we have user factory okay we have name email email there and a whole lot of them so for the user I'm just gonna create a new user and I'm going to say um insert okay so that I can um, insert multiple records okay just like so or you can use create but I think we should just use create okay to be to make things a little bit more easier so we need to enter name and I'm gonna be the first user, so it's gonna be Oziri Omeka Imano. And for email, it's going to be Oziri Emeka at gmail.com. Okay, for username, it's gonna be Oziri. Then for um, password, we are using hash make okay one two three four five six one two three four five I think that was five yes I think oh six sorry it should be six great now just before this in the migration table the use of migration table I like to add a field called avatar okay and I'm going to give it a default of no avatar no avatar the PNG or the JPG but I'm just gonna leave it that way okay because we're not going to be using it a lot of times so email verified at it's notable we can actually work with this password email username and name okay so I think this is all we need so back to the database seeder we need to import the hash this hash facade and then let's try again to do this for create another user okay but for avatar we need to enter something okay now if you go to your asset folder your asset folder in public assets and image and users you see some avatars which I left there for us to use okay well for me I think I prefer the avatar 3 to be mine 
JPG. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it that way. JPG. Avatar 3 to JPG for me. Then I'm pretty much going to do this for the other users. Pretty fast. This is it. And for this, this two. And okay, so for name, I'm hoping that this is okay. This is a man. So I'm going to say this is John Doe. Okay, and the email is John Doe at gmail.com. The username is John Doe. The password is the same. Okay, and three that's me. One, it's a man. I'm gonna call this David Von Grace. Okay. For the email, David, username, David, avatar is okay. This is David White, so still remains the same. And for the fourth one, it's a woman. We'll call this um, Rose Geraldine. Okay. Gera nice and the email is going to be rose at gmail.com the username would be rose and this would be avatar for the jpg i don't know if to spell the scary thing correctly but i sincerely i'm sorry for spelling it that way so let's continue for the fifth one, hmm, I'm going to call this Linda. Okay, Linda James. And the email is going to be Linda. The username is going to be Linda. And the picture is going to be five. Four more to go, guys. Hmm, this is a man. I'm going to call this. Frederick Charles. Okay, so the email is going to be Frederick at Gmail. I think I'm having some issues with Frederick at Gmail.com with the um, email. Okay, so this is supposed to be Linda at Gmail.com and Rose. Okay, that's nice. And the avatar is supposed to be six. Okay, so oh, this is seven. Oh, it is seven. Hmm, a female. So I'll call this root. Hmm, root Paul. Okay, and the name is to be root. The email address and the username is to be root. Okay, and the avatar eight or no, seven. Sorry. So for the eight one, hmm, the female, we should have this as. Um, oh, seriously, I've read the name Elizabeth Joe. Okay, Elizabeth Joy. That's nice. Elizabeth at Gmail. And the username is Elizabeth. So for the 8 1. Okay, I think that's for the 8 1. Already. Yeah, this is for the 8 1 already. So last but not the least. Hmm, we have a guy. What name should it be? We use my pet name and my last name, Neon Emmanuel. So that will be Neon. Username will be Neon. And I will be Avatar 9 to check page. 
but we have an issue right here in the spelling so this should be spelled correctly i'm just going to mass replace them okay this is supposed to be spelled password correctly great good thing i figured that out if not we would have faced a, f a problem in the what's called later session of this video but let's continue guys so we got the cedar up and running so i'm just going to say php assistant migrate fresh i think i already have that migrate Fresh, okay, then PHP artisan DB seed. So, database sitting completed successfully. Okay, so let me reload. Try to log in to Ziri, and the password is run. Great, this is great. Okay, so for this what's it called uh, image we should have assets okay always remember to do it that way image users and I'm going to concatenate this okay to the authenticated user avatar okay great now method to string is not i understand what you mean by that but i'm just going to reload and bam we have that so if i was to log in and to sign in with roots having password one two six okay we see this changes successfully and we have a four right here okay so with that guys i think we are golden guys okay so the next session of the video we are going to create our model where we'll start implementing the follow for follow business logic so see you in the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to this new episode of the video now in this video we will go straight to the important business logic in our fellowship application. Now, this is really an easy application to build, okay? The full for full application is quite easy if we understand the logic and concept behind it, okay? Most programming tasks are simple. All we have to do is to process or to know beforehand the logic to use in accomplishing it. And once we get the logic, we'll be able to build it anything we want as long as we can think it yes i mean anything we want as long as we can think about it so straight up i'm going to go to php storm and i'm going to open a new terminal okay just close this great so remember guys if you're new to laravel you have to start up xamp apache and mysql uh, every time if not you'd have an issue okay so I'm going to create a model, so I'm going to say PHP artisan make model, and I'm going to call this model fellowship, okay? And then I'm going to add the the dash m flag, okay? So as to create a migration with it. Great. So we've got this up and running. Now. In my database folder, I go to migrations and I click on the fellowship. This is the one we just generated. Okay. Now there are two columns we need for this follow for follow application. Okay. And the first column would be the user ID one. Okay. And then it, the second column would be user I user two ID. Okay. User one ID and user two ID. So this is going to be big undefined big integer I like to use that okay and also undefined unsigned sorry unsigned big integer great now just to explain why we're using this the user one ID okay is going to indicate following followers okay when you are actually following somebody 
and the user two ID is going to indicate the person you're following. So what this means is that E for instance root is the user two ID and Oziri is the user one ID. It means that root it means that Oziri is following root. Okay, that's what it means. And if root on the other hand okay is to use a one id that means that root is following a siri okay so that's just the concept following and followers okay so that's why we have this ui right here followers in this case osiri maker emmanuel is what following you and following means that in this time in the database table this particular user would be the user to id okay now let's get this started and see this in action okay but before i do this i would just like to create a database seed okay this is how i like to do mine okay so i'm just gonna duplicate this or i'm just gonna write a new one so i'm gonna say just after the user right here i'm going to say this would be user one. Okay, and this would be user two. This would be user three. Great. And user four. And I'm just going to leave it that way. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is to say fellowship, okay, app forward slash fellowship, and I'm going to create, okay, just like I did for the user. And this time around, I'm going to say user, user one, okay, user one ID is equal to I'm going to say ID user one, okay? And I'm gonna get an ID from it. And the user two ID, I'm going to give that way. Now, I wanna create a couple of followers to my account, okay? So we can test run this, that's the purpose of this. So my ID, which is Oziri, is three, okay? sorry is three so i'm just gonna put it this way so what this means is that if i put it this way three that means this user one id okay which is i think i think my id is actually one sorry one that means this user one id or i'm gonna change this to two right now because i'm already user one this user one and user two ID is actually following me. Okay, so when I start updating that on my database, it's gonna be on my followers. Okay, so that's what it means. Great. Now let's do this again. Okay, and this time around we're gonna change it to three. Okay, and this time around we're gonna change it to four. And this was supposed to be user one i think there's not supposed to be an underscore right there sorry okay i'm gonna make it up to five okay and six great so we have user two user three okay we didn't start for one because i am user one and yeah, we would have user four, okay, and then would have user five, okay, and then for followers, I'm going to create another one, and this time around, I'm going to be user one, okay, great, and user six is going to be user two, okay great now i'm just going to run php assets and migrate fresh 
okay to run a fresh migration and then I'm going to seed this migration PHP as is in DB seed great so we got this up and running now if I reload this we won't actually see any difference okay but no problem and I think that's pretty much it on this video I'm trying to keep it short as possible okay so it doesn't get boring at this point so guys that's it on this video I think there's one more thing we need to do okay just before I call this short off I'm going to create another migration real quick and I'm gonna call this migration notification notification okay so for the notification migration we have this I'm gonna create a model and notification and uh, what's the call for it and migration for it and for this we are going to have user ID okay and then we're gonna have title and then we're gonna have content so for this we're gonna keep it at unsigned big integer and for the type to string is well enough and for the content we should have long text great so right about now migrate fresh again or I'm just gonna zoom migrate instead of migrating fresh great and we got that in play so that's it guys we just successfully created our database migrations models and we also seeded some fellowship data now on the next video we are going to start implementing this so things is getting really interesting guys i'll see you in the next video bye bye hello welcome back my dear students to this new episode of the video now in the last video we created some migrations some model and also some database seed and now on this video we are going to create or start outputting this data okay so this is the kind of flow i like to do when creating applications on laravel i like to seed my database okay with some some dummy data and then output them and then before writing my business logic okay so let's just go ahead we'll do that real quick there's a lot to do guys so first of all i would advise you to write php codes in your view okay it is not advised and we are going to write a code in a controller so remember if auth check if the user is logged in we want to send this view okay so we will be sending all of our data into this view so the first one we want to do is to provide that as for this list which is the followers following and notification so right away would say followers is equal to so we're going to go to the following table or fellowship table okay where would say user okay one id is not equal to is not equal to to the authenticated user id okay so we want to get that okay so for this instance we want to get the user one id okay where it's not equals to that and we want to get that so we can okay and for the follow following this is where you are following a user so we want to say where is equal to the authenticated user id we also want to get that and we also want to get notification notification okay so we go to notification model where the concerned user id is equal to your id so we can skip this equal to right there and we're just going to see the authenticated user id okay so after that we can also get now we're going to send this to the view using compact okay so we're going to enter this as so so following and then notification great 
so after that we are going to go to logged in where is logged in where is logged in hmm this is it great now we're gonna receive this that is right here save for notification we are gonna receive a variable called notification in our view and if I'm to sorry I was supposed to die dump that if I'm supposed to die dump it let's go back we are having undefined variable notification let's see if we spell that correctly notification Mm. okay so let's try again okay you see we have this right here okay great now this is good we can also still pass this variable right here okay to the dashboard passions we can just create an array and then paste in the notification variable we created okay we can do it like this just create an array and paste in it right there or we can also still use compact okay compact and then we do like so okay so that's one but we need to place this okay in the um dashboard okay i think that's the right place so go back to dashboard and then i'm gonna come right here and in this place we're going to say notification okay i think this is the best way to get this spelled out correctly great so we're going to have the variable notification and then we can just say count okay so let's just see this in the browser real quick reload and then we have zero notification nice Okay, so we'll do the same thing for following and for followers real quick. So right here, we're going to have following. Okay, and right here, we are going to have followers. Great. So one of the things to do is in the logged in index view, we need to also pass this compact right here okay now this method i'm using is just for us to have kind of like a kind of like a raw structured code okay so if you like you could actually use any method you find best but i just kind of like doing this method so i'm going to copy this right guys right here followers and we should also have following i just went to copy and paste I don't know why I am not just spelling it correctly today. So let's go back and see this. So we have followers for and following zero. Hmm. Followers and following. Let's go back to this. This is supposed to be where user ID fellowship where user ID one is not equals to the authenticated user. And for fellowship where you are following where user id1 is equal to the authenticated user let's see okay great i know that we in the database seed we created we were actually following one person and then we got this correctly right now so one other thing i like to do is this people right here i like to just create run real quick for it okay so back to logged in index and we have this people right here okay so go back to my art controller i'm just going to create this duplicate that serata and then i'll say user real quick and then right here i will say user okay and i'm just going to get all user just get all user and then i will pass this right here user great and in my logged in index right here i'm going to have this user and i'm going to have count okay great so let's go see that real quick to see how things goes okay so we have nine users in application and what i think can we do guys we need to appear a name right here so we're going to say auth the authenticated user name okay and for our avatar 
we have to show our user avatar right here so we have to create one real quick to make up one real quick i mean so i'm going to say asset and as a function and then pass this okay concatenate with the authenticated user okay avatar great so this should work properly let's just see this in action real quick reload great so this is working just fine and it's all generated from the dashboard so guys that's pretty much it on this video and in the next video we are going to talk about this followers and following okay so see you on the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to the session of the video now in this session of the video we are going to talk about the followers okay so i'm going to go to my uh what's it called code editor real quick and then go to followers right here okay so remember that we are sending this data okay through compact right here okay so right about now we're just going to copy this since we're going to followers okay and i'll paste that in sorry please permit me to off flux okay it's just changed the screen brightness and resolution of my computer and it's affecting my eyes okay so we have compact we're not gonna push pushing notifications to it we're gonna push followers and following okay i think we're not even gonna push following just follow us okay and for this guy we are gonna push following okay mm. and for this guy we are gonna push people for followers we're gonna push this guy following okay great so let's go see this in a browser real quick and i'm just gonna reload this we have an unexpected string hmm where is this from okay i need to close that okay let's check this still have another error undefined variable people people i think we were supposed to move the users not people users right here so this was supposed to be users so go back to a browser make sure we have the error great so back to the followers okay we are going to go back right here now what we have to do is just to find a single block of what's it called sample right there and we're going to run a loop through that sam sample and do some what's it call display them to the user in the view okay so we're going to take away this other data this other riser called data right here and we just take a single block loop through them and do our magic so we'll set this in action real quick so if you notice while i was speaking with you i was actually closing the gutters of this block of code this block of html code and i deleted it just to the final one okay so this continue so I'm gonna take this guy right down okay so we can see clearly and for this guy we still got to take you down great so the next thing to do guys is to run a each loop okay and if you notice right now our code starts from here okay the div class list and the rest so before you run before I like to run my each loop, I need to check. I'm gonna say at if okay we are sending in I think followers followers okay we can say count is greater than zero okay or we can check if it's empty whichever one we want to do but I just like to do it the count way. So we're gonna say and if and before we do that we need to run an else statement and then we just have to say maybe a div class no followers found okay or oh, no report found let's just say no report found okay since we're going to use this you do not currently have any followers okay let's just have it right there and next thing i want to do is to run a for each loop so i'm going to say f for each okay followers okay as 
we're gonna call this item great and yeah I'm gonna run another for each loop I'm gonna say and for each okay and now for the item right here okay for the name I am going to say item and we're gonna get the user okay and we're gonna say name now this user right here is an eloquent model which we haven't created and we're going to create that real real quick okay so instead of user i'm just going to say user one just pay attention okay you get the old logic in no time and right here i'm going to do the same okay so real quick guys i'm just going to say we have this i'm going to say create my blade assets paste that in concatenate that wait the um, item item user user one okay avatar but we need to make sure that we are dealing with the user one for the followers okay for the followers way great so let's go back to the fellowship model right here okay and real quick I'm going to create a new method okay I'm going to say public function I'm going to call this user one, okay, and I'm going to return this belongs to the user, the user class, okay, and we're going to call the foreign key to be user one ID, okay, and uh, this to be ID, okay. So I think we should just do that right now, and let's see this in action. So go back to followers. We have user one and the rest. Okay, so hopefully let's just hope this works and see how it turns out. Followers. Okay, so we've got this. We've got four followers: John Doe, David Vargas, Rose Garadine, and Linda James. Great. So we can actually output a kind of count if we want to, but no problem. But what I want to do right now is I'm really I'm, I'm just gonna take this step, this particular step I took for the followers to the following. Okay, so from the followers right here to the following. So back here, I'm first go to my fellowship. Okay, I want to create or duplicate this model. Okay, and I'm gonna call this user two, and we're gonna change this to user two. Okay, and back to the following. We just have to take all of these guys out real quick. Okay, so we got that out. And for this guy, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to say at if we have the following variable. Okay, I'm going to count it with a count function. It's greater than zero. We want to do that. Else, we're going to say at else. Okay, and then we add at end if. Okay, so great. We're just gonna repeat this else right here in the following. Okay, you don't currently have any, or you are not. You are not currently following. You are not currently following anyone. Great. And for this guy, we need to run a for each loop, say a for each following as, let's just say item, item two. I like to segregate my code like that. Okay, so let's just have this. And um, we should have at end for each okay so hopefully this is right and right here we should just have the same thing we'll go to item 2 and then we we'll go to user 2 and then we we'll go to name and for this guy we are going to have asset this and concatenate to 
item two, user two, and avatar. So let's see. So followers, we have this full and for following, okay, we have um Frederick Charles. I'm following just one person, Frederick Charles. That's nice. And followers, we have this. And people, we have that count. Okay, so profile, we have this count on good. That's great, guys. And I think that's pretty much it. We have this already planned out. Okay, see for followers. Okay, followers, that's the people following you. We have John Doe following you. Okay, and we have following for the people you follow. We have followed right here and the rest. So that's it for this video guys. On the next video, we are going to talk about the people. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Hello my dear students, welcome to this new session of the video. Now in this video, we are going to talk about the people tab. Okay, so we've done for the followers, we're done for the following and now we are in the people. So real quick guys, I think we already have a variable in our view in the logged in view called the user okay so go back to people and i'm just going to collapse this go to real quick and get off this unused html codes okay great so just going to take them off okay so back here we are going to take that down and also this guy so just like we did for the followers right here you see we did an if count to check and we did a for each loop before the um people we're not going to do an if count because there needs to be a user okay we must be an authenticated user to accept this page and all these pages this following followers in the dashboard so we don't need to have to count because we need to have be a user if not we are not going to assess this page okay so it's as easy as that so right away guys i am just going to run a for each loop real quick i'm going to say for each Okay, so let's see. Okay, for each user as item three. Okay, and I'm gonna end my for each right here at end for each. Okay, and right here I am going to say for the item three we are going to have the name since we're already in the user model we don't have to create the user one or user two like we did for the followers and for the following okay so i hope you understand that if you don't you need to learn laravel my friend okay you need to go back and learn about models and eloquent but we're not talking about that in this video so we're just gonna access avatar real quick great and this is supposed to be in the asset function okay so let's do this now let's just go view this real quick i'm just going to reload go to people and we have all of this hmm but i think we didn't do that correctly so this for each is supposed to be right here and this guy down here so let's go view this again reload people and we have this up and running okay so now if you notice this we have the image quite all right and for the follow okay we are having just the same button follow follow and the rest now we need to kind of display if we're already following this user or not okay so to do this real quick we need a helper function okay and to create one in the app folder i'm going to create a new folder called helpers and i'm going to create a file in it called helpers 
no PHP great so the essence of doing this is to create a global variable that or a global function that will be accessed throughout the application so I'm gonna create a function real quick called fellowship or is following since we already have fellowship okay great and for this I'm just gonna return say hi okay I think that's good and in the composer I'm gonna have in the composer to JSON we need to include this in the auto load so right here I'm gonna add a comma okay and we need to use double quote guys see files and then we have an array and then we're gonna put the helpers we created okay I think that's helpers slash helpers dot php but we need to go to the app directory great now if this turns out that correctly for us all we have to do is to say php sorry composer dump auto load and hit the enter key so this is going to generate a new composer auto load file for us and it's going to include the function we created so right about now if i just go to see right here just to test things up and i say dump i'm gonna say it's following okay and go back to my code we should see the high okay so we have the high right here great so this is working just fine so what we have to do right now is to pass in a kind of variable called id in this is following okay and then we need to create an if statement so i'm going to say if we got to go to the fellowship model okay where the user one id the user one id okay is equal to the id which we're passing and it exists okay we want to do something in mark you we should also say have another option to make sure that we are getting this information for the logged in user and we're going to say where user to id okay is equal to the authenticated user id great and if it does we want to return return follower okay and here we should add an else if okay and we'll repeat the same step no need to rewrite this it's a really long line of code and then we are just going to change this to user2 okay and we're going to change this one to user1 great so we're going to call this following we're going to say return following great and finally we're going to say else we're just going to return none okay great so when we go to our people the blade the php file right here we are going to run an if statement okay and we're going to say if is following then we're going to pass in the item id okay of the user and we're going to say if is following is equal to following okay we're going to have following right there okay and we're going to have at else if okay is following we're going to have the item 3 id is equal to follower okay we are going to have the the what's it called the button same button okay right there but this time we're just gonna put follower right there and lastly we're gonna have an else okay and we're gonna have follow this time around okay and then we're gonna close our if statement 
great so hopefully this works nice let's just go see this in our browser so i'm gonna reload this and back to people and you see we have follow following and we have follower okay i think we have just one following which we have right here followed okay so instead of having following okay in this place we should change this to um followed great so apart from that the follow button remains the same with the followed i think there is a misconception the followers is having following okay and for the following right here we have followed okay so for following right here we should have followed and for follower we should have following okay i think that's right let's just reload and see for people rows okay is following great and also we should change the class of this to tally with what we have in the followers tab right there okay so following we're going to change the class of this oh, great so let's go back to people real quick and reload so back to people you see we have this up and running so for Frederick Charles followed which we have right here okay guys so that's pretty much it for this and this video okay one other thing I would have loved to do is just to check for a kind of condition whereby we don't have the else condition okay now I know we know about this okay but I just like to check so what I good what I'm gonna do is that I just like to see my else statement run cor cor correctly okay so for the fellowship right here okay I'm gonna take all of this fellowship seeds we have and quickly I'm gonna run a fresh migration and then I'm gonna see okay now we're seeding without the fellowship so we have followers zero following notification and right here you see we don't have you do not ha currently have any followers and for following you do not um that's good and for the people we should see just following button okay so I style this up a bit this um, diff class right here no report found okay do want to get the css okay if you don't know where to get that hit me in the description section of this video or in the resource section and i'll provide that for you so guys i'm just gonna put this back real quick okay and then i'm gonna run my fresh migration again and then a database seed okay to make sure we have all of this back in play okay we do now so on the next video guys we are going to work on the search okay and as soon as we work on the search we are going to work on the follow logic okay so see you in the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to this new session of the video now in the last video we talked about the following and we did this for the people okay that's everyone is in our application now in this video we'll talk about the search great so quickly we're going to go to our code and we have this right here so basically I'm going to create an ID called user search okay and then in this input I'm going to have an ID called user search input great so back to our logged in where we included this passions the people right here okay because we have the script section right here and we don't have the script in the people okay we're gonna write our JavaScript code right here great so I'm gonna do this the dumb way say document okay that on on submit we want to tie that to the user search that's the form okay and then we want to create a function make sure to pass in the event so we can say event or prevent default behavior of the form great and now I'm going to create a variable say data and then I'm going to get the user search input okay and then I'm going to say the value to get the value from it great 
and then I'm gonna send an access get request okay and then we're gonna create a route we haven't created it okay and I'm gonna pass in a param using the object param method for axios and I'm gonna say this param is gonna be term and I'm gonna pass in data to it great and as soon as we do this we then want to collect the data okay and then say console.log the data great and then we also want to catch whatever error we might get and console.log the error as well great so quickly I'm going to create a route so go back to web and in the authentication middleware in the get right here I'm gonna pass in search okay now this is going to be auth controller okay and instead of log out right here we should have search great so back to my auth controller just after this home I'm gonna say public function I'm gonna do it that way we're gonna pass in the request okay and then we're gonna save this request in a variable called time so I'm gonna say request term great and then we're gonna go to user model and we we'll say where name I'm gonna do this the lab way say like okay and then we have to concatenate that to the variable term okay so we've got this great and then we want to say get so for this we're gonna call this data great and then we're going to return the response but this time around it's going to be a view great and then we're going to go to home go to partials and then we're going to go to people okay and add the search so quickly I'm going to duplicate this line and I'm going to call this people search blade.php and for this we won't be using all of this okay so I'm gonna take this out okay so we have div class and the for each right there so literally we just want the for each okay so let's just have that closed up correctly great now one thing we need to do is to change this to data okay and to make sure that because we are sending this data right here okay we need to send that through compact compact data and also we should send the term the term the user is searching for and one thing we have to do is to write an if statement say if okay data count is greater than zero we want to do that and we'll have an end if also we need to have an else statement great and just like we did for the following okay just in case we don't have any auto call results we want to say sorry there was no result found for your search term and we need to appeal the term variable we send in through compact great so I think this is fine I'm just gonna go back to this people right here okay and then I have this ID already outputted here so just make sure you have this okay if you don't make sure do well to get that we have such result right here okay so I put that after the scroll bar in or two, okay. I updated the HTML, so do it to get that. We have SAT results right there. And then I'm gonna go back to logged in, okay. And then I'm gonna say Ash SAT result. I think that's an ID. And the people, okay, that's an ID. So back to this, and we're gonna have HTML to be equal to data dot data great so our controller does this fine 
and we're golden guys so let's go see this in action real quick i'm gonna reload this okay and people I'm gonna eat the enter key okay and let me try to search something we might not have and you see we say sorry there was no search for this try again nice so let's just say oziri and you see we have this working out for us correctly and amazing guys if you want to you can switch this up to be a bit to say instead of submit we should have key up and let's go back reload we can actually have something like this so that the moment we enter an input we have this real time okay say and you see this coming up okay for us and this is nice so one beauty about this is that all this is happening without the page reloading and it's crazy guys it is amazing so that's it on this video you guys i hope you learned the tour thing okay and i'll see you in the next video where we're gonna implement the follow logic okay and also one more thing is do all to bring back the migrations and the database seed okay I did that before starting this video. All you just have to do is to say PHP Ascend Migrate Fresh and their database seed it again because we are going to be needing it in the next video. Bye bye. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this new session of the video. So, on this session of the video, it's high time we allow people to, all our users and application to start, okay, clicking on this follower and do stuff themselves then appearing from the data so right about now we're just appearing from the database we want people to do this themselves so we're gonna go back and the first we're gonna do is for the followers okay so we have this button right here so i'm gonna do this with document event or dom event and we're gonna have on click we're gonna read on a function called process data okay great so basically before I go with this I would like to create a function now in logged in right here just after we have the search I'm gonna say function process data and this process data is going to receive a first parameter now the first parameter is going to receive is more like the action okay and the second one is the user ID okay so and we should also have selector great okay so back to the process data in the followers right here we are gonna pass this now there's a way I like to do this I like to create more like a kind of to distinguish this um, what's it call uh, each of this because this is gonna run through a for each loop okay and when it does it's going to appear a different then to pass into this process that let's just pay attention and we'll get this okay so we have item and we have user one and then we're gonna pass in ID okay for the selector and then for the action this is following okay right here we want that when the user click on this button it's gonna output something that says are you sure you want to unfold stop this user from following you and then if the user go ahead to press OK, we would go ahead with the action. So this should be, mm, we should call this unfollow. OK. And lastly, for the user ID, we should have item user one ID. Great. So I think this is right. Okay, this is supposed to be in the curly braces like so. Okay, so back to uh, what's it call logged in. Okay, we have this right here. Now when a user click on the button, okay, we want to use Netflix. okay so go back there and as soon as this load we're gonna click on confirm and then I think this is the right one to use so we should have something like this so let me clear this up a bit okay this is for yes 
and this is for no okay great now we should also pass this this the um what's it called the title of this should be attention okay and then we want to do something real quick we're going to say if the action we're passing we want to do it in a way whereby we can actually use this function for both the this tabs okay this tabs and this tab okay so we're going to say if the action is equals to unfollow right here we want to do something but first we want to create the variable called let this become the user action okay and we're just going to make that undefined so right here we're going to say user action is equal to we're going to say unfollow since it's unfollow we want to say are you sure you want to stop this user from following you okay so this is going to be the message we'll pass in this confirm stuff right here so we have that and we're going to pass this right here okay now as soon as the user press yes we want to create an axios get request okay and we're going to pass in a route real quick and we're going to call this route user action okay so we should be expecting data or okay and we want to console that log that and we should also catch errors console log all right here great so quickly we're going to go to web.php and create yet another route so i'm just going to duplicate that replace this and replace this so right about now go to the alt controller and just after the search i'm going to say public function we have this passing the request and then close return a item of our request okay great so let's just check this out real quick when a user clicks okay and when it's on the follow we have that okay so for the selector when using that and when we're sending in this get request right here we want to do this with also using the object so as to send params okay right here and we want to call this action right here um we should call this action too and also for the user id we should pass in user id okay so this is going to pass in unfollow and it's also going to pass in the user id right there so let's just see this in action real quick guys so i'm going to reload this page to followers and I'm gonna click on this we have are you sure you want to stop this user from following you say yes and then right here in the notification bar in the network bar we have unfollow and user ID 2 now well let me try for Linda James and right here we have user ID 5 great so I think that's pretty much it for this video guys I don't want to make this video too long and on the next video we would see all of this in action which that implementing all of this see you in the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to this new session of the video now we'll continue from where we stop okay we are actually in this user action right here so first we want to say if the user action request the action the user is taking is equals to unfollow okay we want to do something we want to check if it actually exists before we go ahead with it so we can actually get that from this right here so we're going to say if fellowship okay where the user one id is not equal to the authenticated user okay and then we should say 
where the user to ID okay is equal to the authenticated user exists and we're going to do something now if it doesn't exist we should have this return a response a JSON response to be precise and then we're going to pass in data and we're going to say sorry unable to process data great so how's that spelled let's check okay great and now if this happens all we have to do is to create yet another variable called data okay we have that okay and then we're gonna get first okay and then we're gonna delete like so okay now let's go try this out and see so in followers I'm gonna reload I'm gonna try this it says yes okay so let's just try to reload this go back to followers and you see John Doe is gone if I'm trying this for David Walgress I try to reload to and you see that the progress is gone so we need to start appearing this real time so the user doesn't have to reload the page to see this in action so what we're gonna do right now is to go back to our code and for the followers right here we're gonna have this followers action okay so we're gonna duplicate that nice and for this followers action we are gonna take this guys off okay and also this guy off great so now for the followers okay just after we have this scroll something right here we're gonna create a div ID I'm gonna call this div ID say um, follow action followers show action and put on the closing tag great so we're gonna have this followers show action copy this and back to a logged in this should be a dot okay we should say the selector this guy right here ash follower ID dot HTML then we should have data dot data great HTML great so let's go see this in action real quick guys reload followers click on this yes and for some reason this is going off completely so let's try to see this again we have followers show action and in our followers we have this ID div ID followers show action okay and the followers action this is fine and just for the fact that okay after this happens okay we were supposed to return that response so great after this happens we want to return the, um, a response okay response and it's gonna be a view and right now we're going to say it's gonna be in home dot partials dot followers action great and we just have to replicate what we have right here okay and we're going to paste that and we're going to pass that through compact right here data okay so if we go back to followers action we have followers instead of this we should have data and we should also have data right here so let's go see this in our browser reload 
try this one more time okay and we still have an error but this time around I'll try to pull off a fresh migration and then seed this so let's go this time let's open the network notification bar to see this we have a yes okay so we have a 500 error that says trying to get use of one property of a non object okay property of a non object in the followers action okay so let's go see this again now this is supposed to be get sorry for the error guys okay but we are all humans we're prone to make mistakes now you see that is gone great now let's do that one more time and you see this is all happening real time great and yeah you see you don't currently have any followers great so that's it for the followers i hope we learned the tool didn't form it and we're going to replicate the same action for the following okay so see you on the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to this new session of the video now in this video we are going to repeat just the same thing we did for the followers to the following so quickly i'm just going to copy this stuff we pasted we wrote right there and paste it into following okay in this button okay and instead of unfollow we should have follow and instead of item we should have item 2 and also item 2 for here and in logged in right here we should say else if okay action is equal to I think we should say remove follow I think that's it instead of follow we should say remove follow so I'm gonna go back to following and instead of follow we should say remove follow okay so back to this guy right here okay and we want to say this and the user action would be are you sure you want to unfollow this user okay so this is nice and it's going to send the action to be remove follow okay so I think we're golden so I'm just gonna copy this guy right here just not to lose the spelling and right here we're also gonna add another else if okay I'm gonna have request and say remove follow I'm gonna say it is equal to okay is equal to the request sorry action is equal to this guy right here okay and then we we'll want this to happen great now for this else if okay we're having we are also gonna do this whole thing right here okay and we're just gonna paste that so we're able to process data for the else and this time you see for the followers right here we have user ID is not equal to but this time around we're gonna have is equal to because if you're following person you are the first user in that table okay and right here we can have not equal to great so we're gonna duplicate this okay real quick and for this guy okay so also for this guy and for this guy great now this time we also need to pass in a new view called following action so we're gonna duplicate this and call this following action okay and then for the following action we are going to just like we did for the followers action okay we are going to take off all of this okay and also all of this great and if you check right here in the followers we also added a new what's it called ID so we we need to copy that and for the following 
we will put that after the scroll by inner div class okay so following I think this should be like so okay I think that's right I think let me just confirm we should just replace that great so I think this is pretty much it guys let's just try this one more time we go the following and try this are you sure you want to unfollow this user you say yes and then we have an error right there let's see this let's try this once again great and I think I kind of realized where the error would be from so let's go back to the O controller and you see we have data right here and this and get the lead tone response following action return the data and for following we should replace this with data and also this with data okay so let's try this one more time the action we don't follow Okay, let's just see reload and now we have an undefined variable data okay so where could that be from okay this wasn't supposed to be there it was supposed to be here we're supposed to have that right there Okay, so let's try this once again and for the following try yes we still have no response remove follow if action is equals to remove follow hmm if request action equals to remove follow I think it shouldn't be a space right there could that be the problem let's try again reload following try this okay I think we have that response right there okay but we currently not showing this okay real time so we have to go back to following and we call this follower show action is supposed to be following show action okay so I'm gonna copy that I'm going to go back to a logged in index right here and I'm going to run an if statement to say if the action is equal to unfollow okay we should have this and then we should have an else if okay the action is equal to remove follow We should also have this so an ID so we should have HTML right there to be data dot data great I think this solves the problem for us so let's go try but this time around if I reload there'll be no data in my following okay so I just have to run a fresh migration and seed again so let's try to reload. I'm gonna close this and for the followers, I'm gonna click, can play with this. This is amazing guys. And back to following, click, and you currently you're not currently following anyone. So that's it guys. I think we are true with this followers and following logic, and that's pretty much interesting. So right about now we're gonna do one real quick called the follow. Okay, and the next video we're gonna do the follow, okay? So see you on the next video. Bye bye. Hello my dear students, welcome to this new session of the video. Now in the last session of the video, we did for followers and for following, okay, where we add this nice functionality in play, okay. Now we want to do the same for people right here, okay. So when you try to follow or unfollow a user, it works and looks real time. And then we'll be implementing it in the search, okay, so you can also do this and we'll implement the follow action right there. So to do that real quick, I'm gonna go to my people.play.php right here. And first for the followers, instead of rewriting, we're just gonna copy this 
function we have right here okay so go to people and that will be in following okay and then we'll go to following okay and then we'll copy this function same function and to people that will be in followed great and then we're going to paste this one this last one and we're going to call it follow okay now one of the thing is we want to make sure the variable we're passing in right here is the right variable okay so it's supposed to be item 3 okay and so is this guy item 3 item 3 item 3 and item 3 then we want to also make sure that we are not going into the user model because we're already in the user model so I'm just gonna take that off real quick okay great and I think that's all item 3 item 3 great so I'm just gonna copy this right now and replace with the people search the blade of PHP what we have since it's the same okay so I'm just gonna test that out real quick refresh go to people okay try to click on this Linda James no okay so let's try again okay I'm just gonna reload okay down the followers following Linda James and let's try that Linda James yes and you see we don't have that right here okay so this time it's working for the followers but it's not putting real time for the people so we need to do something about that so i'm going to go back to my logged in index to play php right here i'm going to create a function real quick called reload people okay so the reload people is going to send an access request just like it did right here so I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste the code right there okay and this time around the action is gonna pass right here is gonna be reload people okay and for the user ID we won't be passing any okay so now when this gets its data we just want to change the inner HTML of whatever response it sends so we're gonna pass that to the data great then we need to go to the people right here remember we have a div class just like we did for the results so I'm gonna copy this search result right here and in the logged in right here we're gonna put that I think is that a div or an ID that's an ID okay so we've got this in play now we want in any scenario whereby we unfollow or remove follow we want to load reload people okay so that's nice now let's go handle this in our controller real quick so i'm going to copy the reload people action right here and we're going to go back to the all controller okay so right here we're going to write yet another else if statement and i'm going to say if the request action okay as equal to reload people I'm gonna create a user variable okay and then I'm gonna call the user model which is get right here we've done this before somewhere here okay this place and then we're going to return return response adjacent response to be precise and then we're gonna pass sorry a view to be precise and then we're going to pass in the home to partials the people and this time around we're going to create a new blade called people reload and then we're going to send in our data using compact okay so we'll pass user right there okay so back to the people or we can actually utilize this people search if we want to so i'm just going to duplicate this people search and i'm going to take this to people reload now we're not going to be needing this okay now that we'll be needing this but in actual sense we're sending user not data okay so i think this should work out fine let's just go see this in our browser real quick but first i need to make this look good a bit 
so I'm gonna reload right here and back to people okay so try this out yes and you see this is happening superb you see that right there guys you see that right there okay so I think we've achieved that and that's pretty much it for this video the next video we are going to implement the follow functionality okay see you in the next video bye bye Hello my dear students, welcome to the session of the video. We've got the followers working, we've got the following working, and we've got the people putting this data dynamically from the database. And now we want to integrate the follow functionality, okay? Right about now, if you click this follow, you see you have the URL with me, yes and no. And that's because we didn't actually handle that in our if statement right here, okay? So we want to do that right now and this is going to be the last option we're going to be sending in this statement we're just going to leave it in else so right now i'm going to duplicate this user action are you sure you want to follow this user and we have this okay so right here tool we'll have else and we're just going to do like so okay and we're going to leave that right now okay now the user action right here are you sure you want to follow this and when it happens okay we are sending the action right there and it's gonna return a request now when we start to follow somebody it shows up in the following right here okay so I think this following show action right here this ID will duplicate it's what we have in the following right here following show action so it's gonna refresh that tab this particular tab real time and that makes a whole lot of sense okay but would also want to okay let me go back to the logged in right here would also want to reload people I think that's already handed for us too okay so that's all nice that's all nice now we need to go handle this in our controller right here okay so we have the LZ right here and right about here we're just gonna have the else okay or I prefer to do it this way we have yet another else if okay and we say either request action is equal to follow then we want to do stuff and then I will just have an else and we're gonna return a response Jason response saying sorry unable to perform now what I'm having this is that if the user is not sending maybe a follow on follow or remove follow request action right there we just want to we don't understand what action the user is doing okay we don't want the user to send some random request and it ends up following the user now to implement the follower logic right here it's simple all we have to do is to create in the followership table okay a data or a record whereby the user one ID is our ID and the user two ID is the person who want to follow ID as simple as that so to do that I'm gonna create a variable called data and I'm gonna say new fellowship right there okay and then I'm going to say data user one ID is equal to the authenticated user ID. Okay. And then for data user two ID is equal to the authenticated, not the authenticated user ID this time, sorry, the request user ID. Okay. Great okay and believe me we're passing that request user ID say for instance in the people reload right here you see for the follow we are passing that through here and in the logged in right here okay we are passing this again through here okay through this params function params object rather and we're saying user ID and then we're passing this user ID the process that the is receiving from the on click event we're sending okay so that's great and now we also want to to save this okay so as soon as we save that 
we want to return a response okay and the response this time around is going to be a view okay and then the view is going to be located in home.partials okay and then we'll go to dot following okay let's see this in action following action great so home the passes and we're gonna have following action we want to make sure to pass compact data I think that is what is being used there okay yeah data is being used there great so I think this is all good okay we should try this out and see if we would have any error but first let's just confirm that this is working nice okay so I'm gonna reload this and go back to people and try to follow John Doe okay go to following now let's see this in our notification bar real quick follow John Doe are you sure you want to follow this user yes we have a 500 error and it's a trying to get property okay no problem now in the following action right here it says we're trying to get property user to ID of or what's a call and that's because in the fellowship table right here we have this data right there okay so we want to pull off a fresh record okay from the following okay so if we have right here just like we do right here we have right here okay we say data fellowship where you saw one now all we want to do right here is just to have that run again okay so let me just do that and we'll see this in action okay remember we created this for this um, I, um what's it called code right here that shows people you following this is the code that shows that you saw one ID we have the auth user ID and the okay great and after saving the old data we want to reload that and pass that in to the compact okay so let's try that again Jundo. yes and now we have 200 action okay great so let's see this in action once more so David Vogres follow yes and you see we have followed right there and let's go to following you see we have David Vogres right here and if I try to do this this time around go back here and you see we have this up and running okay so that's cool guys that's amazing okay and I think that wraps it up for the follow functionality okay on the next video we are going to talk about the notification okay so see you in the next video bye bye Hello my dear students, welcome to this new session or episode of the video. Now, there are some few things I want us to correct before proceeding, okay, to the next action. I want us to check this out real quick. I want to try to log in with Osiri, okay. Now we'll see all the fellowship Osiri is having. And if I try to do that for another user, which was the one we created during our database seed, root and we see that root have five followers and this is not true because in a database seed we only see that for Osiri which is the user ID one so that means that we skipped something in this check right here it's supposed to be user 2 right here okay because for this instance right here we have the followers okay and for the user to ID, we want to make sure that it's not equal to our ID. Now, this is wrong, okay, my dear students. We're supposed to have something like this, where user to ID is equal to our ID. So let's go check that out real quick. And we reload, and you see we have followers to be zero. Okay, now if I go try that for Osiri right here. Okay, and we'll see we have followers to be two. Great. Now I would like to run a fresh migration just to confirm this. So let's reload that. And you see we have followers to be four. Okay, now the concept behind this is that 
In the fellowship table, we want to check for the user to where the user to ID is our ID. Now, if we have such instance, it means that we have been followed by this person. Okay. And right here, we want to check where user one ID is equal to our ID. And if that happens, it means that we're following any other person in the user two ID. Okay. Just as the concept behind this. And one other thing I would like us to do is that when we are creating this fellowship right here, we're supposed to check to see that we are not currently following that person. Now there are some instance in the usage of our application whereby a user tried to click on this follow right here. Okay. And for some reason the network disconnected and the state of the button didn't change, but it actually followed the user. Okay, but the state of the button didn't change right here. Now the user like, okay, I really want to follow this person, clicks again, and then it's going to create two records in the following. Okay, when I was trying this out in the last video, okay, I saw that. I saw more than like three records for John Doe. Okay, so to do that, you just have to make sure you check that you don't have the data before creating it. So an easy way to do that is to just create a variable okay or we don't have to use a variable we're just gonna say an if statement and we're gonna say if okay in the fellowship table where the user one ID okay since you follow it is the authenticated user ID okay and we're also gonna have another where clause the user to ID okay this will be user one which is the request user ID exists okay now if it exists we want to return or throw a, what's to call an error that says um, sorry just like this one okay this is have that right there great and then we want to have else right there. Great. Okay, so one other thing I would want us to do is to make sure that we pass the status code for this data right here to be 422. Okay, since we're already using 200. Okay, now one mean 200 is. When you send a JSON request and you don't pass the status code, it is assumed to be 200 unless you um, you hit a code error and it's going to be changed to 500. Okay, so we're already using 200 right here in our logged in. Okay, so we need to make sure we send a 422 so we can catch this as an error in the catch, in the catch right here. Okay, so that's great. So back to that, I think that is complete. That is all nice. Let's go see this out real quick. So I'm going to try to reload, go to people and try to follow report. Okay. And we got this up and running. Now it seems like nothing changed, but this is good practice. Okay. And if you know that before, kudos, if you don't, I hope you learn a tour theme from it. Okay. Just to confirm, we have four followers and, and this, all of this is happening. Okay. So when I try to follow, okay, the count right here is not. A Putin, okay, we're gonna do that, but we are having the nice count right here, okay? So let's follow me on the manual, okay? That's nice. So let's try this out for root and see that we are all in track, okay? So root has one followers and zero, zero, okay? So let's try that. Let's try to remove this and reload okay great so that's it on this video now in the next video we are going to try to make this notification appeal okay and we want a use an instance whereby when it used to say when root right here sends osiria maker uh follows them osiria maker okay we want that to appeal right here in the notification one and we want to get a sound for that okay so i'll see you in the next video guys bye bye Hello my dear students, welcome to this new session of the video. Now we want to do the notification to 
start appearing real time okay and start checking for notifications okay sporadically and then when it gets a notification we get an audio playback saying it gets an uh, notification or a new um what to call fellowship or so now you can see this practically in big applications like facebook twitter and instagram and the likes so we're gonna do this right now using Axios and Laravel, okay? And just watch how we do that. I'm gonna say notification or notify. I'm gonna define a variable called notify. And I'm gonna instantiate a new instance of the notification class. Okay, I told us I like to do it that way. You can do it whatever way you want. And then we're gonna have the user ID. Now, this user ID is going to be the concerned user ID. Okay, so remember that when we for sending the follow request, we're sending the concerned user that the person will follow in ID. So we have a request user ID right there. And then we have the notify title. Okay, and I would say you have a new follower. Okay, and then we'll do that for the same thing for the content right there. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it that way and then save okay if you ask the question where did you have this user ID title content okay we created that when we created the notifications migrations and model so we have it right here user ID title and content great so what it does is that when you send in a new fellowship okay or when you send in a new fellowship rather it is going to create in the notification table and it's going to add the concerns user ID and request using the request okay and then it's gonna pass the title and content which we won't be using in this um, particular course okay but we just want to illustrate this now let's see this in action real quick guys so we're gonna go back I'm trying to reload this okay and I'm gonna create a new private window okay then I'm gonna pass I'm gonna log in as Osiri right here Okay, so go to people and I'm going to try to follow root poll. So click on yes. Okay. So let me try to reload this. And now you see we have notification here to be one. Great. Now that's that's nice. I think we're golden, guys. We have notification here to be one. So we need to do something real quick to appeal this notification real time. Okay, so first of all i would like to go to the logged in okay right here and then i'm going to create an input okay i'm going to make it an eden input okay a type eden input right there okay and we're going to send the id to be notification count great and then we're going to set its value to be the notification right here we'll pass in this notification variable right here and we're going to count it so what we're doing here is to have a kind of input where we store the initial count of the notification when we reload what's it called the page okay so after that i want to create a function real quick okay so i'm going to create a function I'm going to call the function check notification. Great. Now, what this is going to do is, is that it's going to get the initial notification right here. Okay, from the input we created. Great. And then we want to get its value. Okay, and as soon as we do that, we want to use a set interval function. Okay, and this is going to be like so. We want to pass in a maximum of four seconds to do this. Okay, and then when this, this happens, every four seconds, we want to send an Axios get request. Okay, and we want to send it to a route which we haven't created before, but we're going to call the route check notification great and do well to 
sending a param right there so we're going to say params okay and then we're going to send in count okay and then we're going to plug in the notification variable created by them okay so when this gets its data we want to do something but before we go ahead we need to see the output so i'm going to say console.log data the data okay and that's fine and we're also going to catch go pass that as an error and we're going to say console.log error great now we want to call this check function okay just beneath right here okay just right there great so next we want to do notification spelled that correctly is to create a route real quick so i'm going to go to web.php right here and just right here i'm going to duplicate this and we're just going to leave like so and leave like so and like so so back to the alt controller okay and just right here i'm going to do I have my public function you can put this anywhere okay but i just want to put it right here for some special reasons okay just to see the way we implement this one that's what i'm placing right here so for the notification right here we need to create a notification variable notification variable and then we go to the notification class and we say where the user id okay the concerned user id is the authenticated user id okay and then we want to get okay so what we want to do is to return response okay of the notification count great now this is supposed to be a json response okay so we should have that if we want it that way or we could say we send it through data okay and just like so so let's go check this out real quick I'm just going to reload that okay which I think I have and now we are having this okay it is sending one and it is getting one okay if you see right here it is sending one in the params and it is getting one great so what we have to do right now is we go back to the the logged in index right here okay and right here we are going to say something real quick we're going to check for an instance whereby the notification we have locally or notification we are receiving from the server is greater than the one we have locally so we're going to say if data the data that in this data the third data now why i'm adding this third data right here guys is because if you check here in the object with console.log we need to go into one depth more to get data from that so if data the data is greater than notification okay and then we want to do something okay so we're just going to console that log you have a new notification okay and that's pretty much it so what we want to do right now is to run a fresh migration and then dbc that again so Right about now, you see we have a server right there, and that's pretty much great. So I'm going to reload this right now, and I am going to follow root once again. Go to people, and then just before then, let's see this out. Go to network. Okay, so we have zero accounts. Now you see that we are not having any data right there. Now the moment I follow roots okay now let's go back and wait for it now you see you have a new notification 
okay that's pretty much it on this video guys i don't want this video to be extremely long okay on the next video we are going to implement a notification system to this where we get this an actual sound for this notification and we get this count running up correctly so see you on the next video bye bye hello my dear students welcome to this new session of the video now on the last video we talked about the check notification and we actually see that when a serial maker is following root poll i think we see this in the console you have a new notification right there okay that's nice that's great and there's something we want to do real quick we want to update okay the notification value just so that when we're trying to check again it starts referencing to an old data okay and what i mean is that when our code is running it is getting the notification right here from the notification count we created we want to make sure that if that the data is created a notification right there we want to update this notification right here okay so we're going to see that in action real quick i'm just going to copy this okay and right here we're going to have that as a new value okay so a value this time around is going to be data dot data dot data okay great okay so what we're going to do is if it is greater we want to update how many notification we have right here okay else we still believe that the data is in this initial state okay so that's one and after that if you go to the the public right here and you go to assets and we go to file I'm gonna share this file with you okay I had it a uh, mp3 file okay more like a small wave file that just plays a kind of audio okay I think I can play that right here I'm gonna implement this right away to see this in action okay so instead of console logging this we are gonna do something real quick but before we do that here I would like to do it this way we're gonna create a variable called status and we're going to set the status to be equals to false great and then if we actually notice an increment in our data we want to say if status is equal to false then we want to do something okay so what we need to do is to use the javascript audio okay to play this thing a new sound the sound right here to our users so I'm going to create a variable called song, okay, and I'm going to instantiate a new instance of the audio object, okay, and I'm going to say song.src to set the source of it, and it's going to be asset, okay, and I'm going to go through the assets folder, and I'm going to file, and I'm going to just say .mp3. Okay, I hope I have that correctly. Fine. And then I'm going to say song dot play. Okay? And this is nice. Now, there's just one other thing I need to talk about, okay? After we do this, okay? Just before that, we need to also set the status to true so it changes its initial status. One other thing is that when this load up we get the count fine we get the sound okay for the followers right here so let me say if a series is to follow root poll I'm gonna try that again okay let's just try that let's see if I'm to follow root poll I think I'm following out right now I'm gonna reload go to followers we're gonna see it right here okay we need to reload this particular stuff right here so it happens real time okay real time kind of so what i'm gonna do right now is to create yet another function and i'm gonna call that function reload followers okay so i'm just going to go to axios right now create an axios get request you know the drill guys and i'm gonna pass yet another route which would create 
called reload followers okay nice and then we don't need to send in a param okay so this is just a quick route and we have data from it okay and we're going to if we go to the followers right here okay where is that in the views and you go to home okay and we'll go to pastures okay right there you see we have an id followers show action okay so i'm going to copy that id real quick because we want when you get the request we want to refresh this particular content okay so what we're doing is partially refreshing pages to make it look real time okay so we're going to go back to the logged in logged in index right here so what we want to do is to reload the followers and impute that data into this right here okay so let's check that let's do that real quick we're gonna have that and we're gonna have HTML to be data data okay so this is HTML great so we want to call this reload followers okay just after we notice an increment we play the sound to the person we want to reload the followers right there okay so we need to go create this route real quick so i'm gonna go to web.php right here okay i'm gonna say i'm just gonna duplicate this line right here okay and also this guy and this guy great so we're gonna go back to the auth controller so I'm gonna say public function okay and we have that right here in the load followers I just want to make sure so back to the auth controller we have this reload followers and now what we're gonna do is partially reloading pages what we've been doing since it's just partially reloading pages and I think we have something that handles that already for us okay now for the followers fellowship where user 2 ID okay I told you if you've been followed okay the you're gonna be the user 2 ID okay why if someone else is following you you're gonna be the user 1 ID so we have that in the what's a call the reload followers right there so we have followers fellowship where user to ID okay is your ID now we want to get all your latest followers okay so after we do that we would want to I think we could use reuse this followers action which we've created right here we created this bleed followers action okay we can actually reuse that so we're going to say return response view okay and it's gonna be home the rushers dot followers action okay and we're gonna send this to a compact and it's gonna be okay datas I think okay because we're gonna rename this to data okay because in the blade we have right here the followers action we already have that using data okay and we already linked it up somewhere we don't want to mess that up okay so I'm going to run a fresh migration and then I'm going to run database seed okay so we're going to reload this real quick okay so we've got all of this up and running now I'm gonna to go to the other account and reload that so go to followers okay we have all of this go to people then follow root poll okay so we 
right about now nothing seems to be happening okay so I'm just gonna take my time to refresh the page and try this one more time it could be catching the arrow or something back to people okay let's try to follow report follow okay and we have that okay it was catching the error I think so you just had to control shift arrow refresh your page sometimes okay and you see that we have that sound okay if for some reason you're unable to play sound on your computer you make sure you click on this info button right here and you click on permissions okay and you grant this the necessary permission if not you won't be able to play this particular sound on a local development environment okay so that's pretty much it on this video guys if for instance root tries to follow Osiri maker so back and you see we have that and automatically we have report right here okay so this is how happening in fact in no time okay so i hope you learned a two or thing about this video and on this note we draw the curtains okay if there are anything you want to add no problem you can always go to the the discussion session of this video okay and you tell me what you like me to add but for now i'm gonna drop this just like so okay try try adding the load more yourself or with time i'm going to update this course but I just wanted to make sure that we got the concept of follow for follow, follow and follow logic okay and we also see this from a different perspective i didn't want to use the regular form submit and session to do things i wanted to do this using this patch house way loading pages partially so that way we don't need to load a whole lot of resource okay we just had to load them once and a whole lot of things goes on there okay so i hope you learned a third thing from this video you guys are awesome you followed me from the first video to this last video you awesome okay and i do well see you in some other courses okay thank you for watching stay blessed